Welcome to Harbinger and Adobe's joint webinar. Get ready for our exclusive and interactive e-learning session. Select the right speaker for audio output. Test your speaker from audio settings. If necessary, join the webinar using your phone. Use the queue and a panel to share your questions. This webinar is being recorded. Attendees will receive the recording. Let's begin. Greetings uh, to our esteemed guests. Uh, welcome to an exciting webinar brought to you by Harbinger. I am Anuj, uh, your moderator for today, and I'm thrilled to have each of you with us here. Before we dive into the enriching discussions ahead, I want to express my gratitude for your presence today. Um, today, we have the privilege of co-hosting this event with our esteemed partner, Adobe. Um, and thus, you know, since we have Adobe here with us, uh, it will amplify the expertise and insights we are about to explore today. Uh, without further ado, let's embark on our journey um, into the realm of extended enterprise training excellence. So the topic for today is designing successful extended enterprise training experience. Our distinguished panel of industry experts will delve into the intricacies of designing successful extended enterprise training experiences and offering invaluable perspectives and best practices. To guide us uh, through this enlightening session, it's my honor to introduce you to our host, Arun Bhatt. Arun is a senior director at Harbinger Group. He is responsible for driving business growth for Harbinger in the international markets. Uh, Arun is a pas passionate learning technology and digitization enthusiast, and he holds a master's degree in marketing and a bachelor's degree in engineering. In addition, he also has done his post-graduation in international business. We welcome you, Arun. Uh, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Anuj, and a big hello to all of you. We have a great audience of professionals today and an outstanding panel of experts. Before introducing our panel, I'll take a few minutes to set the context of this session. So here is the game plan for today. Let us get started by understanding the business importance of an extended enterprise training program. With the help of our panelists, let us deep dive into understanding the business need and the success parameters for implementing and extended enterprise training. Then we will understand the technologies that could help us to design, manage, and deliver extended enterprise training. And at the end, we will talk about how Adobe Learning Manager helps with an engaging training design experience. Does that sound like a plan? So let's dive deep into it. First and foremost, what is extended enterprise training? The success of any organization depends upon the success of its partner relationships. The name extended enterprise was coined in the year 1990 at Chrysler Corporation. The extended enterprise could include vendors, channel partners, implementation partners, resellers, suppliers, distributors, and last but not the least, the end users of our products. What is interesting is that extended enterprise training is not just a good to have, or 40% of the organizations generate revenues by training extended enterprise networks. How important is it to start thinking about extended enterprise training strategy? As per the research from Brandon and Hall, 50% say that they have seen an increase in awareness of their products and services. 49% say that they have seen improved customer relations. 38% shared that it helped meet and exceed corporate objectives. 30% shared that they have experienced an increase in sales. Before 
we turn to our panelists. A quick for poll for all of you. So how does your organization focus on extended enterprise training? Let me give you 30 <clears throat> seconds to share your thoughts. So, so you can see the uh, you'll be able to see the poll up on your screen. You can vote. Hey Anuj, let us know if uh, you have started seeing the results and once you close the poll. Yes, we have started. 50% of the audience have already voted. We'll wait for the other 50. Let's give us 15 to 20 more seconds. Okay, 10 more seconds for those of you who are yet to vote. Okay, uh, so let us share the poll results, which is up on your screen now. Great. Thank you for your participation. So from the survey result, it would be safe to draw an inference that most of you has a strategic focus on extended enterprise training. And, and people are planning to kind of, you know, like implement uh, extended enterprise training. Thank you, audience. Thank you once again. With that, it is the perfect time to engage our panelists. I would like to start by welcoming and introducing Rick Smith. Rick is the Senior Director of Global Product Training at JLG Industries. He has been working with JLG for over 13 years. He is responsible for all aspects of JLG's product training globally, including service, sales, Train the Trainer program. In addition, he manages training at JLG facilities and several partner locations in the United States. Rick holds a master's degree in instructional technology from Boise State University and a bachelor's of science in industrial psychology from Albright College. In addition, he has also served in US Navy. Welcome Rick to this session. Pleasure to have you here today. So what makes you interested in today's topic? Uh, thank you. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me on your uh, webinar. The uh, so my interest in this topic is uh, uh, here at JLG. We've always been an extended enterprise uh, training organization. Uh, interesting that it started with Chrysler, another manufacturer of machines or equipment, if you would, and uh, JLG. We manufacture construction equipment, uh, and we have trained our customers in service and safety um, for years. And um, JLG sees that as a as a strategic difference in that uh, when our customers are well trained on the use and servicing of our equipment, then uh, that will lead to more success for them and more success for us. So uh, again, you know, we've always seen uh, JLG has always seen training as a key component of our uh, of our customer supports uh, and and our recent efforts with Adobe and and Harbinger have uh, really just begun to to really raise the bar thank you very much Rick I will mm -hmm. circle back to you shortly okay next let me welcome Aditya Basu to the discussion Aditya is a group manager, solution partner program at Adobe. Aditya manages Adobe solution partner program, which governs all the consulting, implementation, system integration, and agency partners of company. He attended New York University to complete a master's degree in business administration. He holds a bachelor's degree in telecommunication engineering. 
So welcome, Aditya. And please tell us what makes you interested in this topic today. Oh, yeah. Thanks, uh, Arun, for having me on. Really appreciate it. Also, you know, I'm glad to be on the same panel as with Rick. Really, um, thanks for having me on. Um, you described my role, right? Um, that I govern. My role is that I run and manage the solution partner program. Um, it, as you said, they're the consulting and SI partners of Adobe that help implement uh, Adobe software at our customers, right? Now, what that entails is we are setting really the framework of what are the rules of partnerships with Adobe? And, and the one of the aspects of that partnership is what are the benefits and investments that we provide to our partners to do their jobs better? And the one of the primary reasons that partners choose to engage with us and have that continuous engagement with my program is learning and enablement. They want to understand how to implement Adobe software better. They want to understand what are the new products and features that they can take to their customers, right? And because of that, it is really imperative that I'm able to offer up the enablement, the training, the content, the learning journeys, all of this, which is very, very relevant to the partners because they just want to be better at doing their jobs, right? It is my mission. It's my job description to help partners enable, become enabled, drive the mission. And that's why extended enterprise learning is really, really like a key here, right? We have around 4,200 partners globally. Partners are ranging from large global companies to small specialized product focused companies. And their needs vary based on what they are trying to do with their customers. Being able to solve that uh, through enterprise, extended enterprise learning, trying to understand what each of their needs are and trying to connect that into how Adobe can really help them um, be better at implementing Adobe software. That's really the, the, the reason why, even though I, my job description has more of like, oh, it's a partner program, but what does that really entail? It's primarily training and enabling partners. So that's that's primarily my reason of interest, why I'm um, it, it's like such an important focus area for us at Adobe uh, to from a training perspective. Thank you, Aditya. It's interesting to know that, you know, like, Adobe has 4,200, you know, partners globally. You have a very strategic focus on partner investments. Thank you. That is, you know, like enlightening. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, Rig, uh, a question for you. Uh, what was the business need uh, behind designing extended enterprise training at JLG? That's, um, <clears throat> so... Like I said, JLG has always been an extended enterprise uh, uh, training organization, and uh, and the needs the need comes from uh, we build these large uh, construction equipments, and uh, and the, and our customers need training on how to operate them safely and how to maintain that equipment. So this is something that that JLG has done from the start, but recently. Um, you know, our focus has shifted in that um, I think the business focus for JLG training, uh, we're trying to, to uh, I, th I think we all know that training is expensive, right? And, um, and we need to uh, deliver better and better training. Our goal is to provide the best training we can to our customers. So from a business need, uh, we're looking for a way to basically share some of those costs with our customers. Um, JLG is not a training company. We're a manufacturer. And, um, you know, our business need from a training perspective is to help uh, get our partners, our customers to help fund this training so that we can continue to raise the bar and provide better and better products and training. Um, if I could, uh, if you'll let me roll on for a moment there, I, you know, a specific case that we're working with with uh, with you on is the uh, the JLG Trainer Network. Um, I think it's a great example of an extended enterprise uh, training effort, and that um, our customers, the operators of our equipment, require training uh, operator training uh, through standards or regulations. And uh, as a manufacturer, we're required to help them with that. But but what what the requirement is and what we want to do is very different we want to raise that bar so uh, we're building a, a a network a trainer network with harbinger and adobe where our customers can essentially use 
part of the Adobe system, they're using JLG University to deliver training to their customers. So, um, so they can deliver online training to their customers and manage that training using the Adobe uh, system, the Adobe Learning Manager, and the uh, headless UI that that uh, Harbinger has put together for us. And so, those users, those customers of ours, they they pay a small fee for the use of the system or the online content uh, and then deliver higher quality training to their customers. In the end, what we end up with is a crowdsourced system that um, is gonna help us continue to grow and, uh, and uh, provide better, better systems and services based on that network. So, you know, I think it's a pretty um, true case of extended network where we have a group of companies, customers, uh, end users coming together and, uh, and all funding this, uh, this effort to provide training. So um, that is, a, uh, is one specific business need that was needed. Our customers needed that training. And, uh, and in order to provide them the best in the industry, uh, we can all share that cost and, um, and just keep getting better. Hopefully that answers the question. I didn't run on too much there. So no. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rick, for sharing your valuable thoughts. And mm -hmm. it definitely comes from the immense leadership experience you have. And uh, mm -hmm. I understand, you know, like uh, you know, like Adobe and Harbinger is helping JLG with their vision on partner training. And we are, you know, really happy to kind of partner with you. Thank you so much yeah. again. Yeah. You bet. Mm -hmm. With that, you know, like, uh, let me ask Aditya, mm -hmm. based on your experience of talking to multiple organizations globally, do you see any other strategic reasons for implementing extended enterprise training? Aditya. Yeah, absolutely. So as I described, right, our partners and the consulting partners specifically, because I am in a in a people business, right? Um, into compare and contrast and to just help set that contest, a lot of times in the technology industry, we look at technology partners who are integrating with us, right? There, the needs become a lot more on how something works well with Adobe. I'm on the solution partner side, which is the consulting and services organizations, right? So what I'm really looking at is the skill set of the people, right? So these partners and the people at these partners, right, they recommend Adobe software to our customers. We hope that they do more of that as opposed to our competitors, they implement that Adobe software once they do win those deals, right? And then they also help us keep the renewals on, ensure customer success. We want Adobe customers to continue to renew and you know stay in the long term with us, right? So that's the business goal that we are really trying to drive. So and as it comes down to my team, right? Our mission is to really help partners be successful at doing those three things, right? We also want to partners to invest in their own practices. A lot of our partners are have multiple practices across technology vendors, and one of them happened to be Adobe. We want them to really hire more people into their Adobe practices, get them upskilled, put them out on the market, and do client implementations and projects. Right. So we wanna we wanna help them make it easy um, for it them to do so. Right. So that's really the business goals from like a vision standpoint. From what is the strategic vision? Right. So now, what does that really translate from a more tactical? Standpoint? We want these uh, individuals, consultants, learners uh, at these partner organizations to first very easily understand what is the foundational aspects of the products. Second, we want them to understand how do you sell with Adobe, right? How do you take our markets? How do you deliver and communicate the value proposition to customers? Then we also want them to also understand how to implement the product, solve for customer technical support issues and align it to industry use cases, or specific, because there might be a global transformation case that is going on at a customer. And how does Adobe fit into that broader picture, both from a value proposition standpoint, as well as from a technical implementation standpoint, we want to help provide that information so that customer partners are much better and successful on that, right? So those are really the strategic reasons. And then once you start getting into the more slicing of that, who really are we training? Are you fresh out of college? Are you someone who is an expert and is already trying to cross 
sell some additional Adobe products? Are you trying to connect and met more, you know, solve complicated customer use cases? Are you a developer who is now trying to become an architect, right? We want to solve for all of this. So it comes down to really help partners be successful, which in turn helps Adobe be successful, which translates down to then, okay, there are specific angles and product features and roles that we want to really train. And that helps drive that success for us. So those that's what is really the reason why training is, uh, or training just happens to be the way. And I think the, the, the aspect which really talks across loss of this is it needs to be self-service. I think that is really the key point here. Um, I think it may have come across from my answer that there is too many variations and possibilities of how someone might want to use that training and having it uh, be self-service is really uh, driving that uh, feature as well. So that's also another goal of ours that, you know, the training does not just need to be delivered, but it also needs to be as much as self-service as possible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aditya. So there are many reasons for an organization to invest strategically in extended enterprise training. Thank you. Thanks again. So Rick, how do you measure the success of the extended enterprise training program? Well, we, uh, you know, if I stick with my example of our of our trainer network, or or generally on our on our online platform, um, we we're looking at are we meeting the needs of the customer? You know, are we getting positive feedback from the network users and the stakeholders uh, that we're providing training to? And uh, is the network growing? Are we reaching out to uh, you know new potential users? Are we getting the word out to the uh, to the industry that that we we think we have a better way to do this? And uh, um, you know, just to jump back to to what Aditya was saying that um, the deliverable, the training deliverable for Adobe need, is, is the application is so flexible, and uh, you know that the the way the people are using the tool, but as opposed to our tool, it really needs to be used a certain way. And what we need is the flexibility of delivery, right? How do we get that training in their hands? Um, because we want them all using the machines basically the same way. And uh, um, it's just a, a kind of a dichotomy there of um, the flexibility of use where our what we need is flexibility of delivery. That comes back to these success parameters of can they, um, can they easily distribute and and consume the training that we're providing so uh so in short good positive feedback growth of our network and we also are looking at support calls or people reaching out for help if if uh if we're getting too many of those obviously we are we need to fix something so thank you thank you uh, rick that's very interesting you know some of the ready reckoners for our audience thanks again So audience, if you have any interesting parameters you would like to share with us, please do share them in the chat window. And Aditya, in your experience, what are some other interesting parameters organizations use to track the success of extended enterprise training? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first is like everything that Rick said also applies to us. So that's like, you know, number one, I would still say the adoption and uh, the consumption of the training, right? Very valuable. Um, Based on where I sit, because partner audiences, if I look at it, they are they are not homogeneous, right? There's a lot of partners, and a lot of them in reality are very competitive with each other, right? So what one of and this is something that I've learned in my role, right? I've not been in partnerships all throughout; it's been only for the past few years. Is they are they like to showcase their expertise on how much and how well they are doing as opposed to the others. So with that, one of the parameters that is really key for us is credentialing. Um, and credentialing can happen in two ways, right? It can be at the individual level where you're gaining certifications, you're gaining accreditations and showing off basically that I have completed a training and 
We are all in that world where we see these on LinkedIn, where people want to be able to put their badges out there, right? So being able to offer and deliver that is something which is very key for us because that becomes the outcome for us, right? It, it's simple that how many certifications and individual trainings or credentials were achieved this month, this quarter, this year, right? So that's one. The second is taking it to that next level where a collection of certifications then becomes a way for a partner to showcase an expertise and says, I am an expert in this particular capability, right? So those are the two part, like ways we can look at that progression of the journey, which is how do individual credentials showcase or drive the training? And sometimes it's a little bit of both, right? You are doing a training and you feel happy you've gotten a credential. Sometimes we need the credential because our competitors have so many credentials. Let's go and do the training, right? So it can drive from either direction and we want to help support either of those cases, right? You feel pride in completing a training or you need it because otherwise, it, I mean, so that you can like better win more business out there, right? So that's probably one of the um, real parameters that is really has become one of my team's primary business or KPIs is, is probably how I would put it. Um, and then the second thing that I would probably add on is in addition to the ones that I, you know, Rick also touched on is transparency. The, the folks in the audience that we have right now that we are targeting are all billable consultants, asking them to stop what they're doing on their day to day and saying, hey, do this training. Um, and it becomes an organizational challenge, right? there's utilization rates which start to get affected, right? So the feedback that comes to us from a training standpoint is we need more transparency on what is the time commitment of a certain training or learning journey that can you share with us? Do I, is this two hours? Is this five hours? Is this multiple days, right? And then uh, being able to find and search it. Um, I have personally experienced because we spend a lot of time doing this, we expect that probably other uh, learners are also spending times on the training portal searching courses, but they don't. They're like, I need to do learn a certain topic. I want to understand it and I want to understand how to finish it. Can you help me get to it in the fastest way possible is, is really what it is. So Rick touched on a lot of the training content quality and that drives adoption, but then getting to that content quickly and easily is probably another feedback that we have heard a lot. It's a softer parameter, I would say, but it is also something that is continuously evolving, right? I don't think we have a, as clear cut of a business KPI on the credential side as we have on this side of the house. Uh, but it's something that we have to continuously keep thinking about on is the training successful and is it being adopted? Yeah, so I think I think that's probably the way I'm thinking of it from where I sit. So yeah, that's interesting. Credentialing and you know transparency, you know, Thank you. Thank you so much. It's very interesting to know all this. Yeah. And uh, and this is very helpful, Aditya. Thank you. Aditya, we would also like to understand how does Adobe Learning Manager help in implementing extended enterprise training? Yeah. Um, so it's funny, right? Because I, have, I work for Adobe, but we are an internal customer of Adobe. Um, for Adobe Learning Manager. So I have the same interactions that say Rick might have with you and the Adobe team, but I'm, I'm like in the in the same you know com corporate network, if you want to call it that, right? So uh, this is what we are doing using ALM for. And we have approximately, so uh, I should probably also clarify that we are targeting the B2B side of Adobe because when a lot of people think of Adobe, and I'm not sure if those people are in the audience, they think of Photoshop and all that, right? Because that's what has a lot of, uh, that's top of mind for a lot of people who casually know Adobe. We're on the B2B side, right? So on the B2B side of Adobe, we have around 20 Adobe products, which is primarily our experienced cloud product portfolio. Within this, we have multiple um, job roles and descriptions for which we have training uh, available for, right? Each of them have very unique learning paths. Are you sales? Are you technical? Are you a business functional user, right? So being able to create a lot of custom learning journeys to solve and take partner individuals and partner learners through that journey is something that we use ALM for because it's start here and take us to that, right? So it's really the learning journeys to hit some of those credentials or certifications that I just talked about. The other way that we use Adobe Learning Manager is, is to implement the 
rules and regulations of the partnership that business compliance trainings. We have a few thousand partners to engage with Adobe and to work with Adobe, you have to do certain compliance trainings every couple of years. That's like the simple thing, but we also use Adobe Learning Manager to drive and implement that because Adobe Learning Manager is helping us track the timelines of when a partner's compliance training comes up for renewal, being able to send out those automated communications and reminders which come off of it. Um, is that's somewhere like, you know, Adobe Learning Manager really sets the foundation for that. And then finally, we are a partner team, right? We are not a training team. We don't develop content. But what we leverage is content that is across the company. We have product teams generating content. We have the sales teams, which is doing Adobe sales training. 80% of that, 70% of that becomes relevant to partners, right? So having ways and channels to work across different Adobe systems and take the relevant pieces of that and structure it through modules on our side is really key. And that's what a learning manager helps us with. It becomes more of program management of training and content in and that management and ease of flexibility is what really helps us. So that's probably other areas that I would say that, you know, ALM has really helped us and what we have implemented and built on ALM. Thank you, uh, Aditya. It's interesting to know, you know, how do you train your partners on your products, you know, and the B2B model, which you are catering to. Thank you. This is helpful. Rick, since you have implemented Adobe Learning Manager, can you share your experience with it? Uh, certainly, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I would start by saying uh, you know, JLG is is known as a is a innovative company, and and we're part of Oshkosh. So, Oshkosh company, uh, the Oshkosh Corporation, is a uh, is is a very innovative company with some highly interesting products and and anyway Oshkosh JLG we both push the uh, envelope and drive innovation in our industries and uh, and choosing to to go with ALM and Adobe um, Adobe is obviously known as an innovative company and uh, that that moves uh, the bar in their industry and. And then working with Harbinger and and with your team for the last year, uh, you know, a proven resource for bringing this to life. And uh, I just can't wait to see where we go together. You know, these these innovative groups and products, and uh, I think it's going to be an exciting um, uh, evolution of our of our uh, products and our online platform. The um, so let me back up there and talk about implementing. Um, uh, ALM and uh, in partnership with Harbinger and Adobe. The um, so this was our first experience in designing a headless LMS, and um, and honestly, we didn't know what we didn't know. So um, we, um, you know, we've had learning management systems, and uh, you know, over the years, multiple versions, and uh, we were looking for something better, and uh, um, so. So uh, we went into it and uh, partnered with Adobe and, uh, and Adobe did a fine job of training us on the product itself and, uh, and then working with Harbinger to, to bring this product, uh, this, this experience to life, if you would. And, um, and I would say Harbinger and Adobe have both been very patient and helpful with us. The, uh, like I said, we, um, having the freedom to do whatever you want really is almost, it's kind of daunting. You now have to narrow that down to, to what you really need. And, um, and I would say uh, we've been partnered uh, for quite some time. And uh, um, in some cases, Harbinger helped us expand our vision, if you would. And then sometimes they rain or kind of reined us in and said, no, that's, that's really not going to work. So, um, I'd say all in all, it's uh, the talent that that's been brought to bear with uh, Harbinger and the support from Adobe in in actually advocating for changes to the way ALM works to support us has uh, it's just really been a, a very positive experience. And as we learn to work together more, you know, I, I this is a long term partnership. This is not something that would, uh, is going to end in a in a month or two. This is 
Um, you know, our plan is to continue to grow and push the, uh, raise the bar and the level of innovation in this industry and partner uh, with uh, Harbinger and Adobe. So in short, it's been challenging, uh, interesting, challenged. I know we challenged the technical team at Harbinger and, uh, um, and I think we've worked extremely well together over the years to, uh, I shouldn't say years, you know, it's been, uh, the projects are on time and uh, and now we're live and it's um, it's been an interesting journey and I think it will just continue to get better. So uh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rick. You know, this has been tremendously very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Rick, uh, I understand it has been around six months since you launched this initiative. So what are the results you are seeing post-implementation? So uh, our results, uh, we've uh, overall highly positive. The, uh, the experience that our customers have on JLGU, they can find what they're looking for. Um, like like uh, Aditya, you were saying, they can, have it, they can find the, uh, the content they're looking for and um, uh, they're able to access what they need, and it, uh, the interface is pretty intuitive. So um, we sent out user feedback surveys, and um, you know, quite honestly, we were pretty critical of uh, of our system ourselves. But our customers, um, it was really good to see some highly positive results. So, so when we are um, as we have launched our system and, and we're working to just continuously make it better, uh, what the customers are experiencing is, is uh, highly regarded and they, they uh, really, you know, the feedback's positive. Um, we're still early in, in this uh, evolution. And I, as I said, I think um, we'll continue to improve this based on that trainer network I mentioned earlier. So we're working closely with key customers and, uh, as they implement this system, we're continuing to modify and, and make improvements based on that network and, uh, and our customers. Uh, the freedom to do that is, is uh, fabulous. That's what we were after. So initial feedback, excellent. And uh, uh, I continue, you know, again, it will just continue to get better. Thank you, Rick. We are deeply grateful for your thoughts. This is incredible. Thank you. That was a wonderful session um, by all of our panelists here. And now we have a quick summary. So the extended enterprise training is a strategic initiative in an organization to drive top line. Designing a successful extended enterprise training program involves both content and technology implementation for an effective experience. And Adobe Learning Manager helps design customer enterprise training experiences. With that, we come to the end of our discussion with the panelists. And I would like to request Anush to take over. Thank you, Rick and Aditya, for being a wonderful panel. And thank you, audience, for the comments and questions pouring in, which we will address soon. Anuj, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harun, and thanks to the panelists. Uh, so, uh, so to brief everyone about Harbinger, uh, you know, I'm really happy to inform our viewers that Harbinger has been a trusted e-learning, consulting, and development partner for over 30 years uh, since our inception in the year 1990. And during this time, we have closely worked with Fortune 500 companies and enterprise clients assisting chief learning officers and L&D leaders in basically aligning their business goals with L&D initiatives. Um, as we all know, the future of work, learning and automation is here. Um, so Harbinger's long experience in e-learning consulting and in ex executing e-learning projects has really allowed us to come up with robust e-learning development frameworks, which we use on customer projects. And this also includes uh, AI-based frameworks. And that's really the innovation that we bring to the table for our customers. Uh, talking about Harbinger as a group company, we are uh, we comprise of 850 professionals and uh, with offices 
and development centers in the United States and in India. And Harbinger as a company, we have consistently demonstrated a track record in assisting our clients in closing the skills gap within their organization, as well as their extended enterprise. Uh, I'm also happy to inform our audience that Harbinger is a preferred partner uh, of Adobe or Adobe Learning Manager, wherein we have helped multiple organizations implement Adobe Learning Manager successfully over the last couple of years. Uh, we have helped clients with uh, the headless UI development on Adobe Learning Manager uh, with third-party integrations that includes e-commerce integrations as well. And we have also helped with uh, the e-learning content needs of uh, the customers, which includes uh, content development, content modernization, and migrating uh, you know, their e-learning content to the Adobe Learning Manager. So that was a brief, um, you know, about Harbinger and our partnership with Adobe. And with that, let us now take a few questions posted by our audience. Uh, in the interest of time, we not we may not be able to touch up on all the questions, but we'll be sure to respond back to you via email uh, for the questions you have uh, posted. Uh, so I'm here in the questions panel. So first question um, is from Jennifer Lastra. And uh, maybe Rick, you may take it up. So the question is, uh, through the collaboration between Adobe, JLG, and Harbinger, have you begun exploring the use of virtual reality as part of an enhanced training solution within JLG? Uh, uh, that's, that's an uh, interesting question. So um, JLG has uh, virtual reality trainers. We have developed um, you know, several, uh, several VR platforms. Um, it's not something we've really integrated with Harbinger and Adobe uh, on yet, but, um, but that's, that's an interesting idea. The, uh, I think there are components of our VR platform that we will integrate uh, in the future. But um, so as far as exploring VR, goes uh we absolutely use virtual reality in our training and uh, uh we have um uh virtual machines uh that we've been training with for about 10 years now excellent that's great Rick. thanks for the uh answer uh the next question and maybe aditya you could take it up uh the question is how is this different from canvas i mean the reference here is to alm so how is this different from Canvas or other platforms that do badges, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good question, actually. Um, so those companies like Canvas, and actually it's funny because we use Credly um, for our own work over here. They are, um, I, from what I understand, and I might be overly simplifying it, but they are credential management systems, right? They are allow you to host your badges and they work across multiple companies. I, I don't know, I can't list it out, but I know that through these companies like Canvas and Credly, you can manage your Microsoft badges, your AWS badges, right? Multiple badges. So they are like badge aggregators. Mm -hmm. What I was referring to more so was um, how, the train, how do you even achieve that badge? Now, ALM out of the box allows you to keep a badge which, you know, to download a badge and post it on, say, any of the public social LinkedIn um, websites, right? However, I think a click back or a link back to ALM, as opposed to one of these more publicly accepted credential management is probably easier. So what we do is we have two options. You can either download the badges internally through the ALM learning journey that we have, or we also push that information out. If you are an Adobe certified professional or expert or architect in any of these products that I listed out or like with the 20 products that I wasn't referring to, those badges are then pushed to Credly for you to manage and download. So what that allows is someone can post it on LinkedIn and if you click on it, it basically goes to Credly and they host and manage that for us. So it's a badge aggregator and you can have a centralized profile where you have badges across not just Adobe, but other uh, companies that you may have gotten it as well. So that it, it depends on how you choose to implement it. Is it all vertically integrated where all the way goes from learning to badge within the same system? Or do you just do learning 
in a system on a learning management system like ALM and have the badge at the result of it in a different system like Canvas or Credly that you just mentioned. It's a choice and based on how you are positioning your certification and where you want to have that be available and be shareable. That's probably what I... Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Aditya. Uh, definitely helps. Uh, Rick, uh, if I may uh, direct the next question to you. The question is, what difference do you see with the new approach of extended enterprise training? I mean, the reference here is from the old days of, uh, you know, not having or having an old way of extended enterprise training to how it has kind of evolved to be as of today. So what are the key differences that you've seen? I think the, uh, the key difference, if, if uh, traditionally we have done classroom training, a lot of classroom training and uh, um, and it's really just a, a matter of reach. You know, we need we need to uh, to get online, and uh, our audience is vast and and geographically dispersed. So we need to be able to reach out to folks across the, uh, you know, across the U.S. and across the world. So, um, you know, one change is more emphasis on digital delivery and uh, uh, of training content and and dispersing these this training through. Uh, extended enterprise. In other words, our customers deliver the training instead of um, us, and and that allows us to reach much more, you know, a much larger audience than if if we try to do it ourselves. So that's a that's a big shift. So the digital content, but mm -hmm. but pushing that delivery out to the customers as well, and uh, yeah, and benefiting their business. So yeah, great point. As you mentioned, you know, crowdsourcing. Uh, earlier as well. So the entire ecosystem yep. is engaged. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Uh, maybe one last question, and uh, if I may direct it to Aditya. So, uh, yeah, and I think I, we covered this during the uh, session. So what are the benefits of Adobe Learning Manager over regular learning management systems? If you may point out maybe two or four good points. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, you know, and I don't want to like, completely explain what the things that I just talked about, right? The, but the net benefit that we are seeing is the simplicity. As I touched on, right, we are sourcing content from multiple parts of the company. Like Adobe is a large organization and getting that channels and pipelines in an ongoing fashion from different parts of the company and being able to transition that into more coherent learning journeys on our side, like is something that ALM really helps support because it's it's that, and I, I think we have a little bit of a head leg up here because I'm an internal Adobe customer. So that always helps a little bit on that front, right? So that's, that's definitely one. The credentialing, I definitely touched on. Um, I do want to say one thing is, you know, what are we trying to think about, right? For the last year and this upcoming year, we are in a little steady state on how we are leveraging ALM. It's because Adobe has had a lot of evolution in its product portfolio. So we are focused heavily on content, right? Updating the content and delivering it. Mm -hmm. But the question that is coming up and what me and my team is starting to look at more from an ALM standpoint, and we have gotten the confirmation that it is easy out of the box is, and I, I know I'm going to say AI, we have not said this on this call yet. So now we, we got that checkbox, right? Yeah. <laughs> Which web tech webinar do you not say AI, right? Um, once that content is delivered, we are trying to get, okay, you have done training X. We recommend you do training Y based on the kind of engagement and profiles and the training that you're doing in our systems, mm -hmm. right? So we want to get to that evolution because in candidness, we are very static right now. We yeah. rely on the, on the learner deciding what they want to do. And ALM, I believe, has done a lot of changes to help support that kind of connected suggestion like do this and do that next i'm sure there is better words i could be using here but from my perspective that re automatic recommended journey is what we really want to start to do more of and that's where i think is how we look at alm the benefit of like alm taking us on that journey there absolutely Hopefully that answers yeah oh, absolutely sure. thank you and uh, it's more about the ecosystem of uh, offerings that comes with adobe alm or aem adobe experience manager in a larger perspective uh, that absolutely. really adds the value right yeah perfect totally totally so i think um, you know thank you so much uh, rick and aditya for answering uh, those questions and uh, for all the unanswered questions we'll be emailing the responses 
Um, you know, our audience is also welcome to connect with our panelists directly via LinkedIn. So we have shared their LinkedIn profiles in the chat window right now. So we are most welcome to connect uh, with them. Um, and that kind of brings us to the end of uh, this webinar session, uh, you know, jointly uh, by Harbinger and Adobe. And um, thank you, Arun. Uh, thank you, Aditya. Thank you, Rick, uh, for your participation and for those wonderful insights. Uh, until next time, uh, uh, we say goodbye to our audience as well. Thank you so much for joining us and being a wonderful audience. Uh, see you soon again.